All right. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? I'm excited to have you. At, I think is going to be the best roundtable breakout of this uh, this month um, because I think Prima Derby is one of the best things that Cub Scouts get to do. And I know you can't disagree with that. They get to build, take a block of wood just like this, and they get to turn it into something awesome like this. And I have the coolest Pine One Derby car. It actually says Key 3 on it. It's so cool. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop up a slide. So uh, I'm just going to turn it over. My name is Patrick Gamble. I'm a field director for the Boy Scouts here in Grand Canyon Council. And um, I'm here today to help facilitate a breakout for you guys. Um, uh, I love my Pinewood Derby season. I love what uh, our kids come up with. And here you can see uh, one of the last Pinewood Derbies I ran up in Flagstaff. I uh, was at the Chevy dealership this last spring. Um, and you can see them having a really fun time uh, creating the most awesome cars. And tonight we've invited a couple volunteers to come and talk about what they do to make the most awesome cars in the world. And then I'll wrap it up with some resources and that'll be what our breakout is tonight. And so at this moment, I'd like to introduce Gil. He is gonna talk about what his ticks, trips, tricks and tips are um, so that you can outrace Gil in your next Pinewood Derby. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gil Lau. I am uh, up in Pinnacle Peak uh, area, which is like North Scottsdale, um, North Northern Phoenix. I'm in Cave Creek myself. Um, I'm a retired Cub Master, but I do love the Cub Scout program, so I am the Pinnacle Peak Cub Roundtable Commissioner, to because Cubs are the best, right? So anyways, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Pinewood Derby. I'm going to I'm gonna go and uh, take it uh, on a different route, um, not so much how to build the fastest car, which is cool, um, but I'm going to take it um, to make, to, to figure out why we do Pinewood Derby and how to make it memorable for for not only your scouts, but your families to build lasting memories. So a little background about me. Um, I was never in scouts when I was a kid. I always wanted to. There's a tragic, epic, tragic uh, backstory I'll reserve for later. Um, so I didn't have any, um, I didn't have any experience with Pinewood Derby and none of the, the youth groups I was involved with um, did it either. So I came into this program not knowing anything about it really. And um, like probably most, Oh, can you guys hear me? Oh, okay. Um, so, um, so uh, when I uh, stepped in the role as a cub leader, or I took a half step back, everyone took a full step back. You guys know how it is, right? Um, so, so um, this was all new to me. All the terminology was new. I had no idea how competitive it can be, right? Our pack had some pretty crazy rules, but being new, I had no idea if it was crazy or not. Um, so anyways, and I wasn't, I, I wasn't super handy with woodworking tools or anything like that. So a lot of it was really just um, having fun with my son, right? And so this goes back to the history of Pinewood Derby, which was created by Cubmaster Don Murphy in 1953 uh, in Manhattan Beach, I think, in, in California. And uh, long story short, he said he wanted to devise a wholesome, constructive activity that would foster a closer father-son relationship and promote craftsmanship and good sportsmanship through competition. Okay, um, so so let's go over some key points here. So um, so before that, though, when when you start working on your cars, make sure you go over the rules with your pack. Okay, that's very important for a couple of reasons. One is, um, you know, there there could be, you could be in a, a unit that has followed tradition forever, and they assume that everyone's agreeing with it or they know what it is, and you may not, right? And then when we, when you go through, look on the internet, and maybe Ken will go through some of the stuff, some some of the techniques to make things go faster. Um, you know, those may not be kosher rules uh, against what your pack rules are. And thirdly, if you are going to take your car to another uh, Pinewood Derby race, like a district, or there's one that's coming up at, um, at uh, the Bear Jackson in a couple weekends, right? Got to make sure that, that your car conforms to those rules too. 
Um, so, so it's okay to make adjustments, but don't go in there thinking that your 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 car that you've won in the pack race is going to be uh, is going to qualify. Then you might have to do some adjustments. So make sure everything is okay. Um, other things too. There's some things that you may not have thought about. So here's here's the car that my son and I made uh, when he was a tiger. Um, no line program back then. Um, you know, super smooth shape. It's just, uh, it's it's a shark, and it used to have a fin. Now, the reason why it doesn't have a fin, at the end of the track, there's the gate that it goes through, right? The fin was a little too tall, right? So you got to make sure that there's 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 rules like that. Other things uh, to think about, too, if you're going for the super optimized design or you're going to try to beat the competition, like some people would make a little ram thing that comes up front. So there's a little peg at the top of the, the of the uh, track that holds it. And then and then when when it's time to let the cars go, they pull a lever and then the, the peg goes down. So what some people try to do to beat the competition is to have a little ram that comes out above and from the peg. So when it comes to the, the finish line, the little ram will will activate it. Well, you may not realize that at the bottom of the track when when it goes from the downhill position to the, the straight forward, it can get caught, right? Some other some other um, issues you may have is where you place the weight, uh, because even out of the box, the the block of wood is under the five ounce limit, and to go faster, you want to be as as massive as possible, massive as in, is as in how many ounces. So you want to get your car to five ounces as close as possible, and where you put the the weight may make a difference, right? Um, and you 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 read a lot of it, and they'll, they'll say like put it further back and that'll give you um better uh um better potential energy for you physics nerds right now the problem is if you if you shave it down too much um and you don't have i assume you don't have a test track at home what can happen is if you put it too far back when when you start racing and the peg goes down all of a sudden your, your car will pop a wheelie and it's going to stop okay so all of these things can happen right so just realize all that's good stuff um, okay, so the so I'm, I'm not going to get too much into like where to put the weights, the shape of the car, you know how aerodynamic, how smooth the surface is going to be. You guys can 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 nerd out on all that. The two pieces uh, of of kit that I think is worth it. Um, so what what makes a huge difference um, is the wheels, not so much the shape or whatever, but it's got to be free spinning. And also, it's got to go in straight. If it doesn't, even if it's off a little bit, if it's like canted, like you're going down, uh, like the 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 snow plowing when you're skiing, right? If it's crooked, you're not going to go fast. The other thing too is is you know if it's if one side's higher than the other, it could bounce, right? Um, and if it's too close, if you press it in too close, it's not going to uh, spin freely. So one of the best investments. I think, um, assuming that this is allowed, is you can get um, something like a um, a a pro body tool. So I'll, I'll I can't share the screen, so I will paste it in the chat. You guys can go, go take a look at it. So it's it's a it's a little tool that that uh, is like a block that goes to the bottom. That, that's sized perfectly for a Pinewood Derby car and allows you to drill holes in, in, in nice and straight. So you can put the nails in nice and straight. Um, if, if your pack rules are that you have to use the, the groove, then this tool may not be good for you, but there's some other tools out there that will help you align the nails so that you can put them in straight. Um, another, an, another thing that works out well is um, like uh, dry graphite, graphite powder. And you could use that to lubricate the axles to make it spin a little more, so you can hear it. It's not very, it's not very smooth, right? Um, so if you could apply some some graphite powder there, it'll, it'll make it nice and smooth. Um, other things you can do is polish the nails and and all that other stuff. But I found that these two simple things, um, very very simple, and and well, is the the best bang for your buck. Um, so uh, besides that, uh, another thing to make things easier because the the car is not five five ounces right off the bat, uh, right out of the box. So even if you use the block card, you don't don't do don't do anything with it. You're gonna have to add some weights. So um, so you could do a whole bunch of stuff. My first year here, 
I try I tried the stuff where I melted lead and, and poured it in. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Easier to just go to Michael's or whatever, get your fifty percent off coupon and go just buy the weights that just screw on and you can glue it on. Um, those are the best. Um, it's, it's just less hassle. Um, another tip is just to bring uh, when you go check in your car or the day of the race, make sure there's a hot glue gun and bring some coins, right? Because because you may weigh on your kitchen scale and it says like, oh, it's 5.0, but you go over there, it's like, oh, it's only 4.85, I can get some more mass on there. You can start gluing pennies or something on there um, to, to, to make up the weight. And we had one guy in our pack that was so experienced. He's like, he'll weigh it and he's like, oh, you're off. You need, you need a, a, a quarter, two nickels and three dimes. Like he was, he was really good at it, okay? Um, so those are, the, those are my, my pro tips. Um, so the, the only other things I would say is, um, so going back to, to Don Murphy's statement about um, constructive activity that foster a, a closer relationship, promote craftsmanship and sportsmanship through competition. So really, we definitely want your scouts to have a good time to, to have close races and come home with the trophy. We absolutely want that, but that is not all, right? Um, so Pinewood Derby is meant to be a team effort between parent or grandparent and scout. Um, that, that's what it's all designed to do. No, one's, no one is expecting the scout to do everything him or herself, okay? Um, I've, had, I've had parents check in their, their car and say like, oh, my scout, oops. I, I can still hear you. Okay, yeah, my 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 headset cut off. Okay, um, I've had parents check in this really really nice, super optimized car, and said, "Oh no, no, my scout did it all himself." I'm like, "Wow, your seven year old's really talented to program the laser cutter and and all this other stuff." Like, no one's expecting that, right? Um, but at the same time, we don't want the we don't want the experience of of checking in the car and now it's time for the race and say, "Okay, um, uh, Tiger Scout Jimmy, go get your car." And Jimmy is looking at his dad or mom and says, like, hey, which one's my car? We don't want that either. Okay. Um, it should be a collaborative effort. Um, so so um, um, the other thing is craftsmanship too, right? Remember the Cup Scout motto, we want to do our best, right? Um, so no matter what your skill level is or whatever, we want to, we want to 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 do our best, learn from the experience and get better the next year, right? Um, so, so that goes with design too. Once your scout has a design and you guys agree on it, as you're constructing it, your design might change. So this is a good opportunity for you to interact with your scout and say, okay, well, that didn't quite work out. How can we adjust it and work as a team to come up with maybe even a better design, right? Um, when you hit those roadblocks. Um, the other thing too is I wasn't super handy with woodworking tools. So this is an opportunity for you as an adult in the, uh, participating in the program to get better as well. So, you know, my first year, it was okay, but it's just, just like, you know, sandpaper or whatever, right? And then when my son wanted to get more intricate designs, I need to up my, my woodworking game. So I made myself better, right? I started, started learning how to use tools, learn more tools, and the, the designs got a little more elaborate. Um, so that's an opportunity to improve too, and you guys can improve as a team as well. Um, sportsman, uh, sportsmanship through competition. Um, uh, one thing is, okay, this is, this is sports and I'm not a big, big fan of just participation trophies, right? We, we do want to, to aim high and do, do our best, right? Um, but, and, and I understand that sports and competition involve trash talking. That's all fine and good, but just make sure as leaders, right, we, we want to, know where that line is and make sure everyone knows where that line is because there's a big difference between hey i'm going to leave you in the dust and you suck your car is trash right we need to remember the scout open law at all times um hopefully your 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 pack has stuff set up but a really good thing to do is before each heat to have a competition the competitors there line up and give each other a good healthy cup scout handshake um that that promotes good sportsmanship um and um, so one thing to remember as, as leaders is what are we trying to teach the kids, right? So having a good uh, competi competitive drive is good, but if your pack is at one of these where it's like, 
if you guys are like the Cobra Kai pack, then you guys should probably have to step back and reevaluate. And um, I think I think when we first joined our pack back in the day, we were a little bit we we're close to that. Um, and so so just just to give you a story about unhealthy sportsmanship, we had one one family that went to the district um, uh, Pinewood Derby, and they they had their car. That, well, they didn't use the car that they they used in in the pack Pinewood Derby. They wanted to win at all costs, so they bought like a third party um, uh, body, you know, upgraded wheels, and 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 it, and it was totally out of spec. And and when the district um, officials told him that hey, you need to make some adjustments, he got really really mad. Um, they got in a, a really loud argument to the point where he challenged the the official out to have a fist fight with them, and that's certainly not what we want to do, right? We don't want to win at all costs, and so I'll just say that ultimately, as a as a as a den leader, my greatest satisfaction in Pinewood Derby was to see the happy faces of all these kids that joined scouting because they had a hard um, home life or they were awkwardly um, social at school. They had a hard time making friends, but they fit in. They did their best and everyone congratulated each other and and they had a really good time. That was the best. And the other thing too is winning is not everything. So I'm gonna show off my son's car. This is pretty awesome. So this was, this was his, his car when he was a bear. So remember bear year was awesome because it was like, it was like, um, it was like woodland chip time, right? So, so you, you use this. So this was a great activity for my son and myself because this one, we used the coping saw a little on the end, but everything was hand carved with a pocket knife. Um, and it didn't take that much time. It wasn't, wasn't that much effort. And my, my daughter helped, helped him decorate it and stuff like that. It was really fun. So this one, I don't think placed, but this was like the talk of the pack. And so, so you know, winning's not everything. There's, there's, there's more to it. And so it's, it's, it's very special. So that's what I have. Um, so I will turn it back over to Patrick. Yeah, awesome. Gil, that was amazing. Uh, thank you so much for your presenting from all different aspects of Pinewood Derby. And now we're going to turn it over to Ken, who's going to talk about uh, fast Pinewood Derby cars. Ken, I'm going to pop up your PowerPoint right now. And if you have want to just say next slide when you're ready, I will be that guy for you. I'd say, I have found. Okay. Can you hear me? Ah, we can hear you. How about you just get started for us there? Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm talking through on my computer or my phone. I'm, I'm not sure. I can hear you, and that's all that matters, right? Okay, good. Love it. So um, we're going to make some fast Pinewood Derby cars, and um, this is just a PowerPoint. I put some time into it just because I've learned so much uh, over the years, and I really use this opportunity to um, try to get my son involved in math and science and physics and measurements and angles and how to use micrometers. And, and I realized some of the topics we're going to cover, um, I have a lot of tools at home. Not everyone has those tools. If you do, the topics we're going to cover will really help you out to make the fastest car uh, possible. Uh, the first year we did this, we started in October. We built a track to be a test platform. And we scoured the internet and put everything on a list. All the, all the things you could find on the internet, we tried them, we tested them. I think we made over 20 cars the first year. Uh, as you can see, the neighborhood kids, they all had cars. I was cutting cars out for months, but I was using their cars for, for test experiments. And um, these are all the things that we've learned over the past uh, four or five years. And uh, I hope they're helpful. Um, what I would first say is I've seen guys draw with a pencil on their car on the wood. I start out on paper. Sit with your, sit with your kid, uh, trace from top down from the side and, and many times on many pieces of paper and, and measure it out like we did this uh, go-kart from a video game shown there. It'll help you many times in the long run. Um, that's the first recommendation on, on how to build your car. Um, next slide. Okay, axles. So your axles are actually nails. They started out as um, just 
cylinders and a two piece die has grabbed that cylinder and smashed to form the head. So it leaves a burr behind. The first thing I would do with these axles, I bought this uh, file kit. And there's a link to uh, Harbor Freight. It's the perfect file kit. Put this axle in a drill press or a drill and hand file that burr down. Let me take a step back. When I would buy Pyro Derby kits, I would buy usually three of them. I had a daughter that would compete as well, but I would cherry pick the largest diameter nails, the four largest, and that would go into my son's car. The thing that is I've learned is the larger diameter the nail, the faster the car. Um, another thing to consider is when the machine presses the head, it squishes the nail. It's not round, it's like a football. It does not matter the orientation if the football is vertical or horizontal. I've tested that theory. But um, you have to get rid of that burr. And also, what am I missing? I think that's, um, that is it on that slide. So you're gonna use your file again, hopefully in a drill press or a drill. If you go to the next slide, you're gonna wanna shape the head of the nail out like a cone. And the reason for that is, you can see on, a, on that wheel, there's a ridge on the outer part of the diameter where the head of the nail sits. If you, if you look at sports cars, like you look at a BMW, uh, you've got these massive uh, brake rotors. And the reason for that is you get more torque to stop the car. You don't want that on the pilot of the car. You want to round that nail head so that you're not touching the outer rim of the wheel. Does that make sense? You want to, you want that nail to rub on the innermost diameter part of that wheel so that your car has less stopping torque, if that makes sense. And this is best done in a drill or a drill press, hopefully if you have one, and get extreme with it. Round that head outward uh, like the picture shows and um, the wheel won't fall off, but don't be afraid. Now, keep in mind, you don't want to file the nail diameter. The smaller the diameter of the nail, the slower your car will be. If you can get yourself 2.091 inch nails, put those in the back. 0.89s are good, 0.90s are, or 0.090s are good. Um, but if you can cherry pick the biggest diameter nails, the better off you are. On the flip side, the smaller, the smallest inside diameter of the wheel, the faster the car will be. So if you can get in there with um, a set of micrometers and cherry pick for the fastest wheels, that will be, that will be the best car for you. Um, next slide. This is what I use to polish. So a lot of, uh, a lot of guys will buy the, the 600 grit, uh, wet sandpaper, the Boy Scout. Um, I saw a Boy Scout sanding kit that the last stage was a powder, like a diamond powder. I think it was 7,000 grit. I bought these from Amazon. I think they're used for polishing telescope mirrors and it goes, it's in microns, and one micron I think is 25,000 grit, or 27,000 grit, something ridiculous. And I cut it into strips, one pack will last you five years for 12 bucks. Cut it into strips, and they're wet uh, sandpaper. If you can do that, you will get a polish on that nail like, like you wouldn't believe, and polish the head of the nail. There's gonna be a lot of rubbing on the head of the nail. You can't forget about uh, the inside part of the, the nail where the wheel will be rubbing on. So get yourself some of those. You'll be way better off than any, anything, anything you'll buy uh, elsewhere. Uh, next slide. Okay, weight. So weight is weight. Doesn't matter if it's feathers or lead or uranium. Weight is weight. I've seen guys buy these high, expensive tungsten weights and they think it'll be faster. The reason those are out there is because they've shaved so much wood off the car 
that they can put in the back of the car as racing weight, but they shave so much off that there's not enough room to put lead to get your weight to five ounces. So if you're, depending on the design of the car, the weight always has to be in the back, and I'll show you why in the next slide. But um, you don't have to go out and spend $25, $35 on tungsten if you can, if you can do it with lead. What I use is, uh, and I put a link um, in the presentation, you can buy these bullet weights. It comes in a coil, all sorts of different diameters. I think one pack lasted me five years. Again, you cut it to length, you drill your holes, um, fill it with wood filler when you're done, when you're at your target weight. Um, of course, you do this after you drill your wheel holes, and we'll get we'll get into that. Um, that might not be for everybody, but we'll get into it. So weight is weight. Um, unless you need to, you don't have to buy the tungsten. Um, okay, next one. Now I I put a link to a YouTube video. It's very good, and that screenshot is from that YouTube video. And the, what it shows is these cars started at the same height. The blue car has the center of gravity towards the front, and it is done accelerating. The red car has the weight in the back. It is still accelerating until those back wheels are on the bottom of the track. So always, always, always the weight should be in the back as far back as you can. Now, if you have the capability to drill your own holes, you can move the rear wheels all the way back and your center of gravity follows your rear wheels. In other words, your center of gravity is three quarters or an inch in front of your rear, rear wheels and you can move those rear wheels to the rear. You can move your weight to the rear even more and get more falling out of your weight and you'll have a faster car. You can see I, I have a little block of wood with uh, uh, that, that Pinewood Derby car. That's the center of gravity. You don't want it too far back because you'll run the risk of your car flipping, the, the nose flipping up in the air, and you might fall off the track. Three quarters of an inch to an inch is best. Um, wood weight, again, I've had my son and I have had some really fast cars where we're not totally stripping off all the wood and putting it in the rear. But the more wood you can remove from the car, theoretically, and put it in the back, the better. Um, but again, weight is weight, and it should be in the back, always. Uh, next slide. Okay, we're going to get into some really cool stuff. I saw some bent nails on Amazon. They were two and a half degree bent. And I thought to myself, there might be something to that. I never bought them, but there, what I did was I drilled the holes for the rear wheels at angles. We did straight drill. We did two and a half degree, five degree, eight degree. Five degrees was best. If you can do this, it's worth doing, but it can backfire on you. You have to have the right setup and you need to verify that you drilled the hole correctly. And we'll get into toe in and toe out and some of the inadvertent things that might happen if you do it incorrectly. But as you can notice on the, the picture on the right, the bottom right, we are riding on the inside part of the wheels. The whole wheel is not riding on the track. Some tracks are wood and paint and there's imperfections in the wood that the rear wheels were all the weight is your rear it's almost almost like you're riding on ice skates if you can get five degrees and this is a painful setup to do but if it wasn't worth doing i wouldn't i wouldn't do it it is worth it you you will get a very fast car if you do this but you have to it will backfire if you go to the next slide i can show you how it can backfire on you okay X, Y, Z. When you're drilling into the block for your axle, if, if you're drilling a perpendicular hole, you're drilling in the X, Y plane, it doesn't matter the orientation of the wood. 
when you drill at a five degree angle in the Z axis, you can inadvertently angle it in towards the X axis and create a toe in or toe out situation. That's what I mean by having this backfire on you. You have to set up, I'll show you the setup I made, but pre-drill a piece of wood, measure the angle, make sure it's everything's set right, and then drill your car. And again, I'm pushing that rear wheel all the way to the back. You can't break that seven inch plane, but I'm pushing that wheel back as far as I can. You have to use a 44 drill bit. You can't, if you look up drill bit charts, 330 seconds, 564, they tell you are equivalent. They are not. Uh, I bought this kit at Harbor Freight, and actually, it's a good kit for 15 bucks, by the way. But um, I hope that makes sense. So, the 89 to 90 degree angle, that light blue angle, would be your toe in or toe out. You have to get it within one degree. And then going from the Z to the Y axis, that's your five degree camber of your rear wheel. That'll put your wheels on the edge. You can later verify that with a, a, a some sort of measurement tool, or just run the track on the or run the car on the table and see if the wheels migrate in or migrate out. They should migrate right out, and and then you know you're golden. Um, go to the next slide. Okay, that's a drill. If you have a drill press, this is what you need to do. You need to make sure that everything's per perpendicular and squared. You need to verify the five degree uh, angle is a picture on the right and put a piece of uh, wood in there and um, drill your hole. Turn the drill press off, undo the chuck, leave the drill bit in and measure it with an angle meter when you're at five degrees. Camber and plus or minus one degree toe in or toe out, you're good. Again, this is very difficult to do. You have to have the right setup but it's worth doing if you have the right tools. Um, next slide. Okay, riding the rail. This was another thing we saw on the internet. It is, in fact, uh, the right thing to do. It is worth doing. What it means is you're gonna lift up one of the wheels off the track and the front right, in my case, I did all, this, all the cars front right, toe in, it's going to ride the rail. It's going to ride the center guide all the way down, which is counterintuitive. You're going to you're going to ride that rail and cause friction the whole entire track. But it's actually better than wobbling around and banging into the guide. And um, again, this is this is somewhat difficult to do. If you're uh, if you look at the bottom left picture, the left or driver side front tire or the tire on the right hand side is that hole is drilled a 16th of an inch uh, higher than the steering wheel. And then also, if you look at the wood block where all the cutouts are made, notice on the front right hole that's drilled, that is shaved inward a 16th of an inch. You can kind of see where the, it's kind of cut out. What that ensures is when the front right wheel is riding the guy down, it makes sure that the, the rear right wheel is not also riding the rail. You don't want that. So you're moving your front right wheel into the center more to ensure that your rear wheels don't contact the track. You only want the one wheel. Um, let's see. Uh, once you polish your nail, for the steering wheel, you're gonna to have to cut a notch into it. What I did was I took a scroll saw or a hacksaw and grabbed the nail with a rag and pliers and cut a notch so that you can get a flathead screwdriver into it. And then I put that nail into a, into a, a, a vise and took a piece of wood, the, the width of the wheel, covered it with a rag and just smacked it with a hammer and put a slight bend to it. That way you can put the steering wheel in and you can adjust the steering with a flathead screwdriver. And I'll show you how to adjust the wheel. Another thing, this is another thing I learned all last year. The center of gravity has to be in the back for this to work. 
the ice cream cone that's upside down, that's where all the weight is. This is my daughter's car, the ice cream cone. And I tried to do a rail rider on that. And it didn't work because when it got to the bottom of the track, uh, when the uh, G-force, when it came down to the track, the center of gravity was more towards the front wheels. And what it did was actually push the left wheel that was up in the air down to the track and it lifted one of the right, the rear wheels. So riding the rail only works with weight in the back. I didn't know that until the very last year. So, uh, yeah. Um, next slide. Okay. This is a shelf. Uh, the bottom picture is a, one of the shelves from the garage. It's a flat piece of wood that I just put lines on. And this is how I measured the amount of turn over a certain distance to set the, the steering wheel to make sure it rides the rail. Thing to keep in mind, the longer the wheelbase, so my front wheels are all, all the way to the front, the rear wheels were all the way to the back, the best scenario was a one inch turn per 48 inches. If your wheelbase is shorter, you're gonna want more turn. Um, on that wheel, which is kind of counterintuitive. The shorter the wheelbase, you're going to want to grind the, the guide more, which is counterintuitive, but we had a, a test track and it was way faster. I think um, when we used the standard uh, wheel spacing, it was something ridiculous. It was like one inch over 24 inches of turn. And um, I couldn't believe it. Cause it's, you think to yourself, you're just really grinding the guide. And it was fast. That car won second place that year. So um, another thing to talk about is moment of inertia. If your wheelbase is as far out as possible and you bump into the guide or, or wiggle back and forth, it takes less effort, less friction to correct the car if the wheelbase is further out. So another reason to push the rear wheels back and the front wheels forward as far as possible because it'll take less friction to correct the car when it hits or gets into a uh, scenario where it's, it's kind of bouncing back and forth. Um, once your car is set for one inch turn over 48 inches, I would drill a hole. I would pre-drill a hole, which is the upper right picture, uh, where you have the chiseled part of the, uh, the axle uh, nail shown. And I would put two part epoxy in there. And that would ensure that come race day, your nail doesn't move with the vibration and all of a sudden you're steering to the right and all that. It keeps your, it locks that wheel into place. So I would highly recommend doing that if you want to make a really fast car. Um, next slide. Okay. This is, I could not find this on the internet, but this is what, this is, uh, this is all us. Uh, and our experimentation. You have to do this. This is one of the best things you can do to make your car fast. Your wheel will rub against the car during a race. Most paints, uh, acrylic paints are the worst. The coefficient of friction is really high and it will, it will grab onto that wheel and it will slow your car down. Once your car is painted, usually I take, I mask off the, the wood where the axle was and I paint paint the car, we paint the car, take the paint off or take the tape off and expose the raw wood. Stick a toothpick in the, the, the hole. Put five minute epoxy, 30 minute epoxy, it doesn't matter, all around that area. And about two thirds through the cure of, you know, two thirds through the five minutes or 30 minutes, whatever, pull the toothpick out and cover the epoxy with graphite. You're, you're impregnating the epoxy with graphite. When that wheel hits the graphite, it's gonna hit a slick surface. It's gonna hit something really smooth. It's not, wanting, it's not gonna wanna grab it. Um, that's gonna get, it's gonna get you really fast. We also did experiments with wheel gap. There's some tools that you can buy. Um, don't spend your money. Don't waste your money. I, I use feeler gauges to do tests 
on wheel gap. This is the amount of space between the wood and the wheel, the amount of wobble that that wheel has. Come to find out, 20,000 is the best, which is a credit card. Of all that work, I had feeling gauges and all this exper experimentation. Use a credit card, cut notches out. When you put your wheel in, smash it against that credit card as hard as you can and pull the credit card out. That is the optimal wheel gap, the distance between the wheel and the car, car body itself. Um, that will get you a really, really fast car. Um, I think that's it. Are there, are there any questions? Amazing. Um, you have come with a world of experience. Um, I, I know for me, um, I had not heard of a couple of those things and I've lived the world for a little while here. Um, that and that was real life experience. And he showed us exactly where you could find the tools. Um, uh, if you email me, uh, patrick.gamble at scouting.org, I can send you the information from tonight's PowerPoint. Gil and Ken, thank you so much for your presentation this evening. Um, if we don't have any other questions, um, anyone have anything? Otherwise, we're going to break our breakout off right now. Thank you so much.